Located in the Arayon section of Doha, we're visiting Education City, which is a 12 square kilometer campus housing education and research facilities from daycare to grade schools to graduate schools. Come along as we learn all about this place. Seven universities anchor Education City, one of them being Qatari and the other six are from the United States of America. They include Texas A&M, Carnegie Mellon, Georgetown, Cornell, Northwestern, and Virginia Commonwealth.
So our story is a little unusual today. Uh, so we'll do a quick um, discussion here and then move up to the balcony. We will get to see our HQ and all the other buildings and I'll talk to you about all of them. But unfortunately we won't be able to sit in the meeting room upstairs for a presentation because there's a, another guest that just showed up. So we'd like to have this conversation here today and tell you more about QF and answer any questions you may have and then we'll move up to the door. of our students to go to college and university. Is that the same here or do you, you know, there's kind of that debate in the United States about um, some students go to university and some students go to, you know, trade schools, right? Trade yeah. schools is what we call them, tech, tech schools. Um, and so in, do you, is that is that something here that are you pushing more of your students when they get to that Twelfth grade to go to university, because that, that's a push for us as educators to try to get students ready for college. And that has changed in the last at least twenty years that I've been teaching, where we were trying to find students their pathways, and now it's more we're pushing more students. So, for example, when I started teaching, I would say sixty percent of my students would go to university. Now it's like ninety-two percent of my students are going to university. I just didn't know if that was the same. But. Yeah, so we very similar. We try to encourage students to go to university. Obviously, if you don't want to, they don't want to. We do have some technical schools where they can make diplomas and specialize in different things. But culturally, in general, um, it's in one of two. Our oh, friends are happening in a good university or some local Qatari students want to go to military or police. That's a whole different path that would they go on. So I think. This would be a good question when you meet the PV team or the latest figures, but last I remember was that 86% of students go to the university and the rest just end up going police or are military just graduates. Uh, and then some of them do get an education there or go to a university for the military, but they kind of leave the traditional uh, so they go knowledge. <laughs> but, you said that there was like the needs were reviewed and stuff for like school. Is there certain milestones or years where that happens, or is it just a continuous ongoing process? It's always continuous. So a lot of times, a few years into an engineering school, the teachers would make recommendations to parents and say, I think you should have your kids stop by and and get the sled and check it out. And there's like a whole cultural element of that. Obviously, the parents are saddened that we deny it and we don't want to fix it. And we, we have strategies on how we the news and how we kind of encourage them to take their students to get tested and make sure that they're in the right environment for them. So there's a lot of uh, back and forth. Recently, it's been getting better. In the past five years, I'd say there's a lot of cultural change. There's more acceptance. And we try to have a lot of people who programs as well for that. So I would say it's a continuous process. But when they first join, there is a, a basic testing to ensure that the students are ready for the school and to identify if they're ready for another school instead. But it's usually that happens during Continuously, we start to plot on different things and like make recommendations to parents. Yeah. It's not, unfortunately, it's not like all the other, all the disciplines in one place, and all the universities are operating differently. So if you're in a Carnegie Mellon and you're in a year and a half in, and all of a sudden you're in a world journalism, you have to apply to Northwestern and go all of that again. There are similar classes you can transfer easily, but it's not, it's not a whole other process. Education is not free. However, we do have very good uh, financial aid and scholarship programs. Scholarship programs are merit based and then financial aid is needs based. For uh, more than 70% of our students are studying on a financial aid program or scholarship. And then there's a third category of Qatari local students who the government doesn't pay for, but they can find employers who would sponsor them. So you can sign a contract with them. Oil company shall let's say I want to do engineering and have say now before my school and I will work there for four years in exchange for giving me an education. So we have these programs. Uh, but then for the majority of our students, it's either financial aid uh, program or scholarship. Financial aid program is quite unique because we don't, so we have to, students have two choices. It's either a loan that they pay uh, over the course of how I've been months, years, uh, with zero percent interest and we take on up to 15 of their basic salary. 
uh, and we recently, but it's a very small amount and does not increase by time and it's very comfortable and the payments are okay. It's just very, um, it's, it's different than like the loan systems in the United States. But the financial aid program is really exciting because you have the other option of saying, okay, I commit to working on Qatar for every year that you sponsor me. So you can come here, get four years of education sponsored by the financial aid program, and you can get housing and stipend and all that. But then in exchange for that, instead of paying back, the goal is I'll work here for every year sponsored uh, and of the organization and all that. Uh, we won't take anything from what you make. So you can graduate in four years, not pay anything, work at QA for four years and not pay anything again for your offer. So and the idea is to kind of invest because we invest in everybody from around the world and we'll say you know if we're going to have more education, we're happy to we'd like to find a way for us to get back by spending some more time and using more talent to serve the country wherever possible. Thank you.